Are you thinking of buying Camtasia 2020? In this video, I'm going to give you the newest enhancements to Camtasia and give him an honest review. G'day, Paul from Democast Media, helping to unlock your creativity and help you get things done. Now, I've been using Camtasia extensively for the last two or three years for doing my content on YouTube as well as client work. I've been doing things like tutorials, demos, explainer videos, and I think it's great. I recommend Camtasia to many people. When I saw that Camtasia 2020 was being released in April, I was really excited about that, especially because I've been stuck with Camtasia 9 for some time now. So I'm gonna give you my first impressions of Camtasia 2020 and demonstrate the top eight features and give you my honest thoughts about it because I think for some, uh, you don't have to get this option. I'm gonna help you understand whether Camtasia 2020 is right for you. And if you want to test out Camtasia 2020 for yourself, uh, check out the, des the description below and you'll find a link there to the latest version. So firstly, I'm going to speak directly to Camtasia 9 users first, just for some considerations there. If you're not a Camtasia 9 user, uh, skip ahead. You'll see some of the timestamps in the description just to save you a bit of time. If this is the first time you're upgrading from Camtasia 9 to a new version, there are four things you need to uh, think about in making that transition, that things that I didn't think about or the questions that I had in my mind. So when you download uh, a newer version, you still keep Camtasia 9 on your computer. It sort of sits alongside the newer version there. So uh, the second thing is you, you need to convert Camtasia 9 projects from Camtasia 9 to 2019 because you can't do it straight from Camtasia 2020. If you need some help with that, uh, go to customer support and they'll be able to give you a link to Camtasia 2019. But once your project has been converted to the newer system, uh, a backup is created. So all those things are covered, but th they're just some things to, to think about. The third thing to consider though is that you can't edit Camtasia 2020 projects in the uh, older versions. You can't edit it in Camtasia 9, that's for sure. So it doesn't work retroactively. Just bear that in mind if you are working with other team members who are using older versions of the system. And finally, your previous library items do not automatically carry over to uh, Camtasia uh, 2020. You're going to have to export them first and then import them uh, manually. And you uh, look, just be prepared. You may need to have to make some adjustments to those uh, templates because I mean I found that I had to make some changes uh, but there are the four things you need to consider if you're still on Camtasia 9 to help you in that transition. Number one, pre-built video templates. I think this is a great way for brand new Camtasia users to make content. So if you've got a webinar recording for instance, you place it on the timeline over the placeholder and You've got the content ready to go to start splicing it up, but you've got ready-made intros. You can change up the logo, change the titles. You've got an outro as well. So if you just want to make quick content that looks great, this is an awesome feature. Number two, create and share video templates. So this is going to be a great time saver if you're making regular content or working with others. You can make your own template by hitting the letter P on the timeline, and that's where your media goes. You simply add your regular intros and outros, regular transitions. This is great because in the placeholder, you can actually write down instructions for people. This is great for freelancers, team members who aren't creative, but just want to follow instructions or for your content as well. Make your template once. And if you go to manage templates, you can find it there ready to go. Fantastic option. Number three, magnetic tracks. This allows you to um, automatically stick content together when there's gaps in between. When you hit the magnet button, it brings it all together. A part of me says like, eh, I could just use ripple delete. If, if you're used to using a single track, this could save you time. If you're using multi-tracks like you see here, this could cause you some syncing issues. So just bear that in mind. Number four, favorites. This allows you to save um, behaviors, effects that you use on a regular basis simply by clicking the star button um, it, you're gonna find it in your favorites menu. This is a great time saver. You don't have to go searching around for those effects. 
This has been available in Snagit for a, a long time, and I'm glad they've finally done this for Camtasia. A great choice. Number five, presets. This feature allows you to make uh, your customized animations and elements. You do it once, give it a name, and then you can save it, and you always can refer to it later without having to recreate the wheel. This is a great time saver. Number six, Camtasia packages. This allows you to share your projects with other people, making sure that they have access to recordings, shortcuts, libraries, favorites, so it allows them to get the job done and everything is in one place. Number seven, track mats. I'm super excited about this. So what you see on the screen took several, several steps in Camtasia 9. Here, I just do a couple of clicks and I can achieve the same effect and more. So I can do videos within text. I can crop footage in circles of different shapes. This is a time saver and one of the most, uh, one of the best things I love about Camtasia 2020. Number eight, improved recorder settings. So yes, while there's more options within the recorder setting, the only thing I cared about here uh, was around the dimensions. So if I switched it to my webcam, I now can have 1080p. It means I can make the most use of my dedicated webcam, which that's what mattered to me. It's gonna help me with my content, so I love this option. I'm gonna put three honorable mentions here that I'm, I'm really happy about. Ripple Insert and uh, Ripple Move allows me to squeeze in different portions of content on the timeline without having to move other things around. That is really convenient. Uh, again, less friction for doing the same thing. And the Widen Grab area means that I'm able to trim content a lot easier. Um, this was a pain point for me. That is a thing of the past. So what are my thoughts around whether you should get Camtasia 2020? A lot of it has to do with your circumstances and what you're trying to achieve. But if you're a brand new user to Camtasia um, and you're serious about making regular content online or doing freelance work, uh, agency work, uh, that kind of thing, then I highly recommend Camtasia generally. Um, it is designed for um, reducing friction, making great looking content with minimal learning curve. So those things are great. Um, but if you're not committed to making premium content uh, and you just wanna do basic animations and you only have a limited budget, there are other options out there and you can maybe skip over Camtasia if you're not interested in making premium content. And so I can understand that if budget is an issue. So for me personally, um, I'm outlaying uh, over $400 if I was starting over again or 249 US. So if the price tag is an issue for you, don't let that stop you from making content. There are plenty of options out there that will still let you record the screen and do some, um, still some pretty good um, animations. If you're upgrading from Camtasia 9 to 2020 and you've got the budget and you're still committed to making regular content, this is a no brainer. You're, you're getting a heap of value right off the bat. So 2020 enhancements and everything that came after that. And the learning curve is still manageable too. So I would probably jump in now before it, you know, it, it gets really, really different. And also as well, there may come a time where it's gonna be harder to convert projects from Camtasia 9. So st I would say start moving now in this direction if you are interested in making ongoing content and, and, and stay uh, with the, the curve that, that's coming along. Should you upgrade from 2018 or 2019 to 2020? I think you're, you're, you are getting much more value in this latest version of Camtasia than you would have going to 2018 or 2019. That's the, the general consensus that I see. Um, but if, if you're wanting to save a bit of money for, for a variety of reasons, um, and you're a solo creator, as in you're not sharing projects with other people, um, then you may be fine using 2018 or 2019 if that's the case, because um, the newest version, the, the, some of the features there, is it, it's meant to enhance collaboration. Um, and if you're not needing to do that, uh, then you'll probably be fine with 2018 or 2019, but I think you're missing out. 
you're missing out on so many more cool features that are available. Um, so it may be just a timing issue. My overall thoughts is that TechSmith are working really hard to make a product that's easier to use, reduces those pain points, makes it frictionless to make great looking content and, and make it consistent as well. So um, what, are, what are your thoughts about this? Would you buy Camtasia 2020 based on your circumstances? <clears throat> I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Thank you for watching this uh, review. I'll invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in, in using things like Camtasia or other visual communication tools to get things done. And leave your comments below. And remember, you can get the link to Camtasia 20 in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.